this is this is find a rabbit in the. <laughs> it's trying to show you more legend, but I'll explain the, the pieces here. Basically, the left side we have the dark red is our math 130 of students that went through the workshop. Uh, the gray next to it that is math 130 students that did not go through the workshop. And then the same thing goes for the bars to the right of that. Light pink being Math 110 students, oh. and the gray next to that being Math 110 students who did not go through the workshop. And again, this left collection of students is just students who enrolled in their next class, right? Who are continuing their education, continuing that momentum. The color coding on the right-hand side is the same. The dark red is Math 130 students who went through the Alex program. Um, the gray well, would be- It's a success. I, I got right. you now. It was bothering oh, awesome. me. <laughs> well, thank you. It's math 110 versus 130, so thank you. Was there anything else I could clarify? No, that's great. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Moises. I'm so glad you're on our team. I'm so glad he's in charge of the Success Center. I mean, <laughs> talks like it too, doesn't he? I mean, it's just student success all the time. This is um, the end of our presentation, and um, what I want to talk about now is the future of the department. I'm very excited about this department. We've been able to hire Pablo, just achieved tenure. Moises is still working on it. And then we have, <laughs> we have 10 others that are newly hired and we're excited about it. There's a tremendous amount of energy and enthusiasm. We're running, I, I think there's some people skipping around in the brand new V building hallways. It's pretty insane to see I'm not used to that. <laughs> I'm used to the D building, but anyway, we're getting very used to the new home. There's a lot of good energy. Um, we're creating, I want to tell you about the, the, the dream of the future for the math department. There, I don't know if you're aware of it, but maybe you are. There is a, a sea change as far as what mathematics really is. Uh, it's been a dream of mine for umpty dump years working here to teach the, um, the non-STEM students, the students that are in my class and they are English majors or what they might be, whatever they might be, forcing them to go through the cookie cutter mode of algebra, algebra. And I've always thought math is, well, let me just say it this way. Math is very sexy right now. I'm just telling you because there's a lot of things happening with math. Uh, one of the most radical thoughts I've heard uh, as we travel, uh, Pablo, Jesse, and myself, we're working on student equity and we're working on a so-called SLAM path. It's not our moniker. We learned that from Pasadena City. Uh, SLAM is science, uh, no, statistics, liberal arts, math. You have to have a buzzword. And so STEM is STEM, but we're talking SLAM now. And there are two pathways. Um, and what we see on the screen now are just the new courses that we've developed. One is combined algebra, which is the STEM pathway. It is uh, just basically the algebra you know to carry on to a transferable STEM course. We have applied algebra, which is our student equity course. And that one leads to statistics or liberal arts. And then we have uh, pre-stat or stat path, which is Math 125. And I'm, we're finding, I think, that the last two will meld together somehow, that we are reinventing what, what we want to do in our math department as far as serving our students. Um, so if we go forward with the math equity grants that we've been um, awarded, um, basically we are Again, we are visiting uh, innovative programs around the area. We're finding out what they're doing. We're finding out what the rebels or the brave uh, math uh, faculty are, how they're servicing their students. And we found a lot of terrific ideas at Santa Ana, College of the Canyons, all kinds of places like that. Uh, wonderful ideas that we want to now mold into our own. How do we serve our uh, student population? Uh, in terms of the SLAM pathway. Uh, we have other equity programs. Mathing over lunch is Nancy Mahan, and what she does is you join the club and you have to do research and you have to meet for lunch and talk about math education. And so far it's been really exciting to hear them talk. I'm jealous, I'm not part of that group. Um, there's Math Jam or Boot Camp, but really what that is is a Math Matters. Orchid Nguyen is taking lead on that one, and it's going to be hopefully a pre AccuPlace or assessment um, warm up for students so they get set, uh, placed more uh, correctly. We also always have accelerated pathways and Kevin is the king of acceleration over here. Uh, he, uh, he and Pablo team taught uh, pre-algebra through 140, that is in one semester you go through pre-algebra through all the algebra and then you're ready to go. First time it was okay, the second time better success. I think the 
did it right. Kevin also is pioneering a trig, a pre-calculus, a combo in one semester as well. So we believe in acceleration. We believe in getting them where they need to be as fast as possible. Um, let's see. Scaling up is uh, basically we get, we're getting more buy-in with people on the workshop model. The workshop model is terrific to get them to practice together. And so right now in spring, we have scheduled team taught back to back to back um, workshop models in our computer rooms. And so we've got like six faculty members that are teaming up to a piece and going through the day working workshop models. And of course, we're trying to always, we, are, we went from one workshop to two in winter, two in summer, uh, and it, it seems to be working out all right as well. <clears throat> So we're really excited about the, um, the future. We're working on engineering as well. We're trying to reach out and grow that program, and we've got terrific faculty to do it with. Um, so as you can see, we are having success in the throughput with uh, STEM path. We're going to work on the SLAM path as well. Very happy and excited about what's going on. We were wondering if you had any questions at the end of this long presentation. A quick, uh, Trustee Archuleta. This is really exciting. I'm just, you know, this, this, is, this is student success. This is true student success, and I just want to congratulate you on your innovation, and um, it's, it's outstanding that you are working, as they say, outside the box, and that you're looking at what others are doing. But this is truly a student success, and I know for many students, uh, particularly for underrepresented students, math tends to be the gateway of success and the fact that you are already showing based on the work that you've been doing, you're already showing that students are persisting over time because that's the key. When students start at the bottom, the, the success rate decreases with however low they start and so the fact that your stu the students that you have are, are you know, uh, being successful, not only are they completing and, and I know for most students, even though they, uh, they complete successfully, it's difficult for them to persist over time, particularly if they have two or three levels to go through. So I, I just want to applaud what you're doing. And, and I would ask you, there's also some great work that is being done by other scholars. I know that there is a, a, a mathematician out of, I believe it's, um, University of Champaign in Illinois, Champaign. and she's got a really um, awesome curriculum, for particularly for uh, students of color, and how they can, you know, actually relate to math, and they have them engaged in doing uh, research. So I would encourage you to look at what others are doing. I know there's uh, this other woman out of Texas that is doing something similar. So I'd be happy to get you that information, but I just want to thank you. This, this stuff really excites me, and I, this is definitely student success, and I want to make sure that you know, we, we look at everything that we're doing within the institution, and, and we don't label student success just what's there in, in the initiatives, but this is, is actually what we have to define as student success. Thank you so very thank much. You. Yeah, it is uh, making it pertinent. I wanted to add making it pertinent to their lives. I mean, math is yes. a tremendous power to use, and it, it you know it, it's a lot of fun that you can have with it. You also have um, career pathways that lead to data. Uh, how do you uh, read data? How do you interpret data? And so these are things that we're working on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and and you said two key things, Moises. You said, um, you know engaging the students, or, or Pablo, I don't remember which one of you, but it's two key words, engaging the students. If you engage the students and then you show and, and, and you validate what they bring, that right there to me is the key combination to get students excited and interested in, in wanting to learn. And so they will rise to the occasion. So I think that's what you've done here. So thank you so much. Uh, Trustee Zia. Yes, um, I'd like to echo Trustee Archuleta's points. Uh, great job on the presentation. This, this, is, this is particularly interesting for me because I studied math and I'm a civil engineer and my partner and I are looking at taking math classes actually. So we're gonna come and check out your boot camp. <laughs> um, and hopefully you'll treat us like the students. Um, I uh, wanted to just ask you a little bit about the software, about the Alex software. If you could just um, 
give me an idea of what it entails, um, just the gist of it, and then um, my, I have other questions as well. Uh, sure. Um, again, the way it works is, is it asks the student a bunch of math questions, and it kind of makes a plan for them. The student goes in, and it says, here's your first math question, and they have the option of, of picking a different topic, like when a word problem comes up, they always switch to something else because they right. like word problems. Um, <laughs> And so the student will, will work it out if they, they'll type the answer in. If they get it correct, um, it now, the new, there's a new interface and it's like, hooray for you now, when they get it right. And um, if they get three in a row, then they get to move on to the next topic and that's considered mastered. Um, if they struggle with it, there's an explanation button down at the bottom for every single problem. So it's like they have the solution manual for every single problem available to them every time. The, the new interface, okay, let me, okay. So, what used to happen is my students, they would go in, they would have a problem, they would look at it, go, I don't know how to do that, they would click explain, they would read through it, then they would say, give me another problem, then they would work it out. The new interface doesn't give them that choice. It gives them an explanation of how to do the type of problem that they're about to do right away at the beginning. Then they click, give me a new problem, then they work it out. And for each one, they can actually um, have that explained. We also have a, a ton of other resources. Um, Pablo, Bert, and I, um, we created um, some smart pin videos so they have access to our lectures for um, nearly every topic from pre-algebra all the way through intermediate algebra that just a click of a button and it's, it's our voice, their teacher's voices. And it's, a, 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 it's like a magical pen. It's, it's got like, like a speaker in it and they write on the, we write on the special paper and as we're writing it, they can hear our voice. So it's, it's like they have access to our lectures anytime oh, that's amongst other resources. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, and how many students have participated? And out of those, how many are women? Are, are women? Yeah. Do we have stats on, you know, uh, yeah. women in our STEM programs or in our we math programs? We need programs? big guns on that one. <laughs> the distribution of students in the classes is just like any other uh, math class. And, and that's one of the things that we were concerned about. Like, because we say in the catalog, this is a computer course, right? You're going to be taking math using a computer, so we thought people might shy away. It's as diverse as any math class that you see. Um, we, we scaled it up to, in the winter and in the summer, to double sessions. So, you know, they're four-hour blocks. So we run around in the morning and one in the afternoon. So that ends up being 320 students. It's, it's four sections in the morning and four sections in the afternoon. And that's just in our intersessions. The faculty are expanding it also to their individual sections, and they're also team teaching in classrooms next to one another. So um, I don't have a total number, but I, we are scaling it up every time we, we move forth. We're even considering doing a, a night uh, version of it as well. So. Okay, and do we um, monitor the success per demographic, or have we gone to that level of granular detail? We haven't. We've got this overall, but our, yeah. in, our institutional effectiveness staff and our research staff provides us with any numbers that we want. So one of the things that the faculty have been doing has been they've been requesting those types of numbers to kind of cut it all those different ways. Okay. So during part two, we'd be happy to talk with you about sure. that. Great. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Baxter. Yeah, first of all, I'm the one that came to the word problem. I said, give me something else. I'm good with money. I'm not good at math. But you've, you've inspired me to sign up. Maybe Sunny and I'll come. She'll be, you know, a wave over here at Calculus Plus, and I'll be down at the bottom. But that's not my question. I, I just want to say I'm so proud of you guys because, of course, I've known Kevin and Rich for a long, long time. And Paul. And it's exciting to see somebody who's been around for a while uh, to be excited about something. And that really makes me feel good. It makes me feel good about the institution. So congratulations to you that you've uh, caught on to this. And, and it's so successful. And I'm very proud of you. Doug. Uh, Trustee Kellogg. Just the, uh, I, I know when, uh, back in the day when Kevin Ryan was sitting at the far left where Karen Kane sits as the president of the Academic Senate is why he probably said, you know, something about you miss me or something like that. But even back in the day, we, we, I know we had conversations about the issues with math. And, and I love, I mean, Rich, I'm going to steal that from you, the killing fields of students' dreams. I mean, that is a, and, and it, it is a great way of expressing, though, that from the level of the Board of Trustees here and everywhere, is how this is truly, it's taking a two-year institution, and one of the factors of why these become four, five, six, seven-year institutions is because the students aren't able to get through the curriculum. 
And instead of just sitting there, and to the credit of the faculty, and we, we had this discussion on how we can get these students through so they can move on with their educational goals and dreams. And to the credit of our faculty, they came up. They, there was, we knew there was a problem, and, uh, and we've discussed it. And it's wrapped around student success. And we use that term sometimes a little more vaguely than we should. But this is a critical component of it. Uh, it's really the results you showed there to me are more than encouraging of the results of what's happening. It is helping the students move forward and it helps us to, some of our goals is to condense it and make this again more of a two-year institution instead of a seven-year institution. Everyone, the frustration of people. So uh, it was really a, a interesting for me to see the results but also knowing why you were doing it from way back in the day, and then what works, and how you're doing things to help these students succeed. And so I really do appreciate it. I know it's been a long process, but the end results are, to me, just very encouraging, and I thank you for that. The only thing I was really surprised about, I haven't heard the word fun and math in the same sentence in a long time. And, uh, and I just hope and pray that uh, somebody takes this and they don't say, yeah, well, there weren't enough seats because we had trustees sitting in our seats. So, uh, <laughs> so if that happens, please uh, remove yourself so we don't have that issue. But, I'll uh, defer to. But, and thank you for acknowledging the fact that, again, part of this overall, it, it sometimes is not as simple as people think, but part of the student success with our new faculty, our new facilities, our, uh, especially over there with the new building in math. And so thank you for even bringing that up as well. It, there's no simple answer. Uh, if there was, it would have been accomplished a long time ago. So thank you very much for what you're doing and, and for the students in particular, because uh, I'm just really encouraged to see this obstacle that's been not only here, but everywhere in the state of California. And to see what we're doing, um, I'm very proud of, uh, of your effort. And, I know on behalf of my, but probably every member of this board, thank you very much. Great. Thank you, President Otto. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And, uh, we're, we've got a lot to be proud of. Uh, you know, when we taught you, the topic here was student success and student success with regard to math. And uh, it's so uh, wonderful to see a culture of evidence. Uh, looking at how it's working, not just individual students, but groups of people, you know, it's disaggregated in, in interesting ways, and it's, uh, it's fabulous. I just have two questions that have been burning. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Creason, is your recent doctorate degree in math? No, it is not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't know, but with this, I thought, as the dean, you, oh, sorry. Um, and the second question was, have any of the math instructors gained weight since they opened the restaurant <laughs> across the way? <laughs> Pablo goes weekly with a group of math faculty. Yeah. I think we're keeping it. And, and by the way, uh, well, please, Pablo. Uh, our goal is to have three, at least three dishes named after us uh, <laughs> by the end of the semester. So we're working on it. Aren't they French portions, though? They're kind of tiny, aren't they? You know, I, I, <laughs> incidentally, uh, what I have heard uh, through the grapevine is that, you remember how everybody used to, all faculty used to go to the cafeteria and eat, and everybody said, what happened to that? What happened to the hour? What happened? They're all going to the restaurant now, and, uh, and I understand that that's becoming a, a hangout. And, uh, so good. To, so thank you very much for the presentation. It was very, very informative. Very good. Okay. The next presentation also has to do with student success. Uh, it is the student success and support program, but before we have you get up to do that, we understand that there is a technological issue with regard to the way board docs, which is the way we do things, works, and that is that we're going to recall issue or agenda item 5.6. We're going to consider the other two parts of 5.6 because um, we understand that unless we consider all of it an item that, uh, uh, and we only considered a third of it when we talked about the 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 um, uh, the Lou Edwards group. There's two other parts to that, so we're recalling that. We understand that if we don't do it all completely, that Eloy gets a reported to the Attorney General's office. But and I don't understand that. Again. But again, <laughs> so we're back to 5.6. 5.6 has two other um, uh, aspects, and uh, they concern 
contracts to um, uh, High Street IT Solutions and um, uh, Deloitte uh, uh, Consulting LLP. Uh, so I would entertain a motion to approve both of those under 5.6. Can I get a motion? So moved. And a second. second. Okay, moved by Trustee Kellogg, seconded by Trustee Baxter. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, on the contract with Deloitte Consulting, uh, this total not to exceed value of $425,000, what is it based on? Um, and then does that cover both phases? Um, if not, what's the total contract value, including phase two? I turn that one over to Vice President Gable. Thank you, President Oakley. That is the total value, including phase two. Phase one is the business process review, and phase two would be implementation services if we chose to use any of them. And, and how much are each component? I don't have the breakdown of each component, but this is a not to exceed uh, contract. So um, in total, it wouldn't exceed the 425,000. Right, but you know, I, we, we do see amendments on not to exceed value, so I just want to make sure that, um, is it fixed price to the $425,000? Are you saying that it's not going to grow uh, beyond this amount in the future? No, it is based upon hourly rates, and so this is the best estimate at this point in time is the number of hours uh, that it would take to do the complete review. So we shouldn't expect to see any amendments in the future, I'm hoping. I hope not as well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on the High Street IT Solutions uh, contract and the Deloitte Consulting contract? Hearing no questions, Madam Secretary, can we uh, have a roll call vote? Irma Archuleta? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Doug Otto? Aye. Sandy Zia? Aye. Great, thank you. Now, we're done with 5.6. We're going back to 3.3 .3 and the Student Success Support Program presentation. So thank you, Board President Otto. Um, and uh, as I turn it over to Vice President uh, Peterson, I just want to make one, one or two quick comments. I think uh, the, these presentations really highlight um, individual efforts, either department efforts or committee efforts, and in the case of the math faculty, the math department, but they are part of a broad strategy, and I just want to always bring us back to the broad strategy that we are not working in isolation. These issues are working toward the same goal, although we're bringing you discrete parts of, of that effort. I also want to continue to take these opportunities to think about <clears throat> the presentation that you're hearing with regard to the math faculty, you're hearing a lot about current work being done and how does that relate to our student success scorecard. Um, this is a lot of great work being done and what you're seeing are leading indicators and these leading indicators should significantly alter the lagging indicators which you hear about when you hear the student success scorecard. Because if you recall, student success scorecard is based on six year cohorts these are students who entered in 2008, 2009, and these efforts are going to be impacting those numbers as we go forward. So I think it's, it's a good opportunity for the board to see both ends of these statistics because they, they do come together at a certain point in time and hopefully we're seeing positive impacts across all of our programs. So with that, uh, the other side of the classroom is the support services that we offer our students, and I will turn it over to Vice President Peterson to talk a little bit about that. I'd like to introduce um, our Student Success and Support Program team. Uh, it's Dr. Jenny Mackay, Dr. Yvette Moss, and our Dean Noel Corral. Thank you. Uh for the uh, opportunity to come speak to you guys tonight. Uh, and good evening, uh, Superintendent President Oakley, Board President Otto, members of the board, and members of the community, staff, faculty that made it out tonight. 
Um, I'm going to set the uh, stage in terms of giving some brief uh, overview of Triple SP. You guys have already gotten some of the information in the past, so I won't talk too much about that. And then hand it over to uh, Dr. Mackay and Dr. Moss to talk about some of the 1415 highlights, some of the 1516 uh, new initiatives that we have going on, and then we'll field some questions at the end. Um, so just to start us off, uh, Triple SP, the Student Success and Support Program, um, is not necessarily a student support services thing or uh, a service. It's, it's an institutional service that is requiring students to uh, fulfill these core services, core services including um, assessment, orientation, counseling, follow-up services. But there are some details among each of these that has really taken an institutional approach uh, to seeing these accomplished from uh, student support services to uh, our IITS folks to our, our fiscal, um, our instructional faculty. Uh, we've seen the development uh, or further development of our online services uh, for students. Uh, we have a suite of online services now available. Uh, we also have online appointment scheduling for students, so we couldn't have done that without the support of IITS. Uh, we have, uh, Dr. Mackay will talk about some of the funds that we're getting in. We wouldn't be able to expend those funds without purchasing, so thank you for all the, the hard work that you guys do as well. And uh, as an example, of some of the instructional support that we get um, in partnerships with our instructional partners. <clears throat> today we had, um, and I'm, I'm sh I don't want to take anyone's thunder, but today we had the major declaration day where we partnered with our instructional faculty led by um, a committee um, that we couldn't have done without the help of Karen Kane. Um, so thank you much, so much for everyone that was involved in that um, and the support for that. But uh, I highlight that specific event because um, in walking around the tables um, and seeing the students talk to departments, department heads, department faculty, um, and looking at all the student services tables, we see sign, uh, sign in sheets of students that have declared a major. And in looking at those sheets, um, we anticipated to see some change of majors, but they were declaring a major. So that was an opportunity where uh, you see point number two, students um, that need to declare a major within their first 15 units or ed goal within their first 15 units to maintain priority enrollment, um, even more crucial to maintain financial aid um, and to get financial aid disbursement, they need to do that within 12 units. So strategies like this and partnerships like these uh, really help ensure that we do meet the needs of the students um, and help them get into the courses such as sexy math that we heard earlier. Um, but the students that we are serving um, are all non-exempt students um, that must complete these core services to be able to receive priority enrollment. Uh, students uh, that are on two consecutive semesters on probation um, or dismissal, um, those considered at risk. Uh, students that may lose priority also include uh, those that have 100 units or plus. So we're working to outreach to these different student populations to ensure that they uh, know of these uh, requirements and um, to ensure their success as best we can. So I'll turn this over uh, to Dr. Mackay to talk about some of the highlights from 1415. Good evening. Thank you very much. It was great to see our partners um, because it is a partnership in all of our activities and especially in the assessment area with math, English, reading, and ESL. And um, it was great that we were on the same agenda with our math colleagues. Uh, so in 1415, we uh, completed quite a few activities. Uh, we saw 5,700 students in our new student workshops, and that includes enrollment specialists, it includes um, every student that goes to those workshops gets an ed plan. Um, our early bird is the Promise Pathways early bird program, so come on out every other Saturday in spring because we're here and the students get all of, the, um, all of those services in one day. And we had over 1,500 students in that area. Um, we um, created almost 24,000 ed plans last year. And some of these, uh, some of them were multiple plans. Students come back a lot. But um, it says a lot about, and I know we have some counseling faculty in the audience, about how hard everybody's been working to be able to accomplish these goals. Because the students walk away 
with a um, plan, they, and they can see it again. Even if they lose it, they can actually look it up in their um, Oracle account. And the other thing, and especially with our enrollment specialists, is that we've been able to close the loop about how long it takes to get transcripts evaluated. We have a lot of students that come from all, a, a lot of community colleges, uh, or even four years, and we've been able to close that gap. So that, that's been um, very successful.